Hey, this is Paul Martin. And Ray the Roadie. For the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. How you doing, Ray? I'm hey. doing fine. How you doing? Good. Good. Forget about it. I'm all right. Yeah, I know. I'm over here by the jewels there, down by there, not too far there from Soldier's Field. Okay, good. What are you doing over there? I'm looking for some shoes. <laughs> okay, blue suede ones. We did that. That was last week. No, I'm looking for a couple con- weeks ago. I'm lo- looking for some concrete shoes. Oh, concrete shoes. Yeah, I got. I got. I got to take care of somebody here. I see. I you see. Done, Hope it's not me, is it? No, it's not you. It's not you. It's, okay. You done me wrong, man. All right. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's not me. Yeah, he's some kind of a wise guy, you know. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So I'm gonna take care of this. That's well, funny you say that. Why that? We're talking to the wise guys today. Oh, that's great. I can use them then. Yeah, they may be able to help you out. They might be able to help me out with my issue that I have. That's right. That's right. So uh, so we're talking to the wise guys. They come from uh, up north, Northbrook, Illinois. Let's see what they have to say for themselves. I, I, think, I think I got some boys up there in that Northbrook, Illinois area there. I love to come down to the south side, though. Yeah, they might come. Yeah, they might stay up north, and then they all don't come down to the south side. Well, I have to find somebody else to take care of your business. I just your might business. have to. You know, there there is that dividing line, that Madison Avenue thing. Yes, yes. So they got to stay in their neck of the woods. <laughs> all righty, I'm gonna. I got to. I got to mix up this this concrete here. You you can go ahead and get this thing started. All right, let's let's see what the wise guys had to say. Welcome to the show, everyone. Today, we're talking with the wise guys. How are you guys doing? Hey, guys. We're doing great. All right. Doing great. Good to be here. Good. Good. So tell us a little bit about the band, how the band gets started, how long has the band been together, and uh, and uh, how'd you get the name? Well, the name was uh, the name was a little bit of a, a project because we're, we were all just a little bit older, and we got together, and um, yeah, we just... Uh, we had to come up with a name last minute because we booked a gig, you know. And uh, we said, if we're a little bit older, how about the wise guys? And we, I mean, we went through all kinds of names. And so just like last minute, and we asked uh, friend Stacy and her friend Kelly uh, Avacola, and they were from a band called Smells Like Dave Grohl. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. And they said, yes, good, go with it. So we went with the wise guys for that show, and then it, it kind of stuck because we were a little bit older. Uh, and wiser, you know, a little older. Sure, and wiser. sure, sure. Yeah. I don't want to know how they came up with that name for their band, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, it smells like Teen Spirit. We, <laughs> how we started about four years ago, we had a card game going in uh, Buddy's house, and then uh, Lenny decided that he wanted to start playing, learn how to play music. So instead of playing cards down the street at George's house, they started to just jam. A couple of guys would get together and jam in his basement. And about four or five months later, I found out about it. And I go, hey, Lenny, you guys playing music? And he goes, yeah. He goes, wow, I play guitar. He goes, really? I didn't know you played guitar. I go, yeah, I, I hack around, you know. I thought you just played cards, right? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I go, well, okay, we're, we're, we put, we're putting together a bowling night on a Friday with a bunch of high school guys. And so... I, we said, okay, I'm going to bring my guitar to the bowling alley. And then afterwards, we're, you know, we go back to Lenny's house. And there was about four guitar players, <laughs> two drummers, a singer. Um, and so we put one of the drummers on bass. They had been working on a few songs at that time, but we really didn't have any songs down. Um, and all of us were really novices. So we were not players. I had never been in a band before. And uh, little by little, we hammered out the ability to play five or six songs. Well, that was four years ago, and that was Wise Guys Mark One. We're now Wise Guys Mark Six. <laughs> so we replaced a couple of guys along the way, and this and the only in fact the only guys from the original band are Lenny and myself. Okay. And we brought in uh, <clears throat> there's a couple of ringers, the Arrigo Brothers and Jim Petty, yeah. and that's who we are now. 
I see. So you're JT. I'm JT. You're a guitar player. I'm the guitar player and uh, lead masseuse. I see. I go around during our shows and give all the pretty girls massages. I see. And, and, and a break or win? <laughs> With happy ending. Wait, I see. Wait, I didn't get my rub and tug yet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get these guys started. <laughs> oh, please do. <laughs> yeah, so originally um, this started all started stemmed through a card game on Friday nights. We're all friends. We used to play cards Friday night. And then I built this house in Northbrook. So we went from the garage down the street from my house to my house. And so these guys walk in and I got a couple oh, oh, oh. guitars. I got a couple guitars sitting there on the stands. And they start grabbing, you know, they grab my guitars, they start playing, they start jamming and stuff. And, you know, so I got a poker room. Now, I've, guys are ready to play poker, but everybody's, you know, in the <laughs> jamming, right? Right, right? So everybody keeps jamming. So now the card game was getting disrupt, disrupted because we kept jamming, you know. So, you know, a couple of weeks later, one of my buddies brings over, one of the card players, he brings over a drum kit. Dave Lupper, okay? And uh, so he brings over this kit and he sets it up. It was an electronic kit, right? So now we're jamming. Now we got guitars, we got drums, you know, we're jamming, you know? And now the guys in the card room are like, man, you guys are so friggin' loud. He's like, I don't know about this card game, you know? So, but we wanted to keep jamming. So he kept jamming and jamming. You know, next thing you know, these guys are moving my furniture around. <laughs> they're getting rid of my couches, you know, and they're making room for the stage and stuff, you know. So I went with it, you know, we were having fun. And um, then we, we said, hey, um, somebody said, hey, you, you guys want to play out? You guys want to do some gigs, play some gigs? We said, sure. Then uh, back to Smells Like Dave Grohl, <laughs> they were playing a gig uh, down the street and from us. And we said, and they said, you know, hey, you guys want to open for us? And we said, sure. We'll play like five, six, seven songs, whatever. He said, sure. So that was our first gig, really. Where was that, Lenny? Where was that at? Oh, that was at the, uh, that was at a, at a backyard bash, outdoor bash. It, it was really, really good. George and Stacy and men's uh, outdoor bash. It was a really fun event. Lot, lots of people, lighting, you know, just on a one acre of land, you know, Northbrook, you know. So Yeah, but a couple of weeks after that, where were we? Well, no, no. <laughs> well, that, that was our first gig together. And then we wound up playing at the Cubby Bear. <laughs> we wound up opening for, for Smells Like Dave Grohl at the C Cubby Bear. Okay. Yeah, so we, we got serious. So that, this is how we're here today is, you know, our average age went from, you know, like <laughs> upper 50s down to like, you know, mid 40s because some of the guys were really serious about playing. And some of the guys just wanted to have a good time, you know, and, right. and we had a couple guys in a band that just kind of came over on Fridays to have a good time. And, uh, you know, we want, we, some of us wanted to get ser more serious. So this is. So Lenny, what do you do in the band? Well, right now I sing in a band. I, I used to play guitar in a band, but um, we, we had a falling out with our singer and uh, we had a lot of guitars in the band. So I said, Hey, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know, so uh, like Bon Jovi said, give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, but so I gave it a shot and I, I, um, I actually, Franco um, is working with me on vocals with the breathing and uh, all the vocal techniques, right. vocal exercises. And I have another um, a female um, uh, coach, uh, Rachel Williams. She's really good. If you see our video, she's in our video singing uh, with us uh, and, you know, on a couple of shows. But um, so I really took it serious and I got serious with Franco and Rachel and I, you know, and I want to do good for the band. So, yeah, I, I um, and I enjoyed I enjoy singing, doing what I'm doing. And these guys are really good players. So right. together we make a really, really good team, you know, and we're all serious about it. So. So yeah. we got Jimmy too. Jimmy, what do you what do you do, Jimmy? I play the bass. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the new guy. Yeah. Uh, new guy. How new? Uh, it's been almost two years now. Okay. Yeah. But he, he's really experienced. So he's really, really good. So did, did you play with someone before this? Or? Um, I've been playing bass for about 45 years. <laughs> okay. It's been a little while then. So so who, who have you played with? Anybody we might know? Um, 
No, no one that stands. I played with mistaken identity for like 20 years. Okay. What bands have you opened for? Um, we opened for Chicago. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've, op- I've opened for Chicago six times with them. Wow. And the last time was this last November at the Rialto right here in Chalia. Oh yeah. Right down the street here. Yep. Very cool. It's a cool, cool theater. Yes, it is. So, uh, so you've got some, you got some history behind you. Huh? Yeah. I, I lived in Denver for eight years and I couldn't find a job, but I'm like, well, I play, I play bass. So uh, I ended up playing music to make money and I made uh, more money than my friends that had day jobs, <laughs> but yeah. I did, did a lot of traveling. Denver, a good market for that? Back then, it it was if you were like uh, in with the agents to get the good rooms because there was only like maybe five good rooms right in Denver. Right. So uh, other than that, you had to you had to travel. So we play. I played all over Wyoming, and Nebraska, and all the neighboring states: Utah, uh, New Mexico. And you think we're in new. How about New York? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never, never played in New York. Been there a million times, but never played there. So DJ, you must be the drummer, right? Uh, he's the lead guitarist. Yeah. That was, I'm not the drummer of the band, but my brother is. <laughs> oh, your brother is. <laughs> yeah, so. So he sat here today, right? No. He, he, and his name is, his name is. Chris, Chris Arrigo. Chris, all right. Christopher Michael Arrigo. <laughs> We, our dad, we don't want to leave him out this way. Yeah, dad, dad named us uh, stage names. I'm Daniel James. He's Christopher Michael. Nice. <laughs> uh, Arrigo is our last name. But uh, so Jim. That's a good Italian name. <laughs> Arrigo. Here we go. Here we go. Two R's for rock and roll. You're right. <laughs> A-R-R-I-G-O. <laughs> I actually played bass in the band first. Um, I started. Um, I. The neighbors down the street, George and uh, Stacy, I was at a party and uh, George decided to bring me over and he's like, hey, they, they got a band. And uh, I remember I had a broken, broken foot at the time. I came over the cast on or uh, a boot. And uh, <laughs> I remember that night. <laughs> <laughs> so I come over and uh, you remember that night? I do. You I know why? <laughs> I remember that night because... Our rehearsals were on Friday nights, right? Yeah. And people would stop by and we'd have some fun. And uh, he came by and when he, when he walked in, he just had this smile on his face and and, and we're jamming, we're having fun. Right. And, you know, we take a little break. He grabs a guitar and he's got a walking boot on because he, he had broken his toe or something at work. Yeah. So he's got this walking boot on. So he takes his guitar and he's jamming, playing. All of a sudden, he takes his walking boot off and boom, he starts playing guitar with his walking boot. I'm like, this guy can play, man. Nice. This guy can play. I was playing slide guitar playing with slide. my plastic boot. Nice, nice. <laughs> I was pretty lit. Uh, I just yeah. trying to make these guys laugh. They're all uh, yeah. really cool guys. I didn't even meet them yet. I just started playing with them. <laughs> well, I had actually seen you play um, at the 545 Club. George and I went to see you and Chris uh, up in uh, Lincolnshire. Or, uh, Libertyville. Libertyville, yeah. Liberty, Libertyville. And then we also saw you playing on Waukegan Road in Glenview. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I knew who you were and I knew Chris, you know, so, and here today they're, they're in a band. So, you know, small world, but. Jim, actually, uh, we used to play in a band together and uh, we were playing at 545. But uh, so <clears throat> I called Lenny and I'm like, hey man, I said, I had such a good time, you know. And uh, I, he was taking guitar lessons and I started actually teaching him. He asked me if I could play bass and I'm like, well, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> sure. And uh, I started actually playing bass in the band. And then uh, fast forward a little bit, I moved on to guitar, my main instrument. And then I called Jim and Jim actually knew uh, the old drummer. They grew up together and it's just long, uh, a small world, you know? Right. So now he's on bass. My brother, we got our, our power trio and, you know, Lenny and uh, JT, it's uh, it's the wise guys now. How long you been with him? It seems like yesterday, but it's like three, over three years now. Yeah. It feels like a blink of an eye, you know, I barely, 
was I was like 28 or 27. It was my golden birthday, I think. <laughs> it was 27. What are you, 31 now? 31. 30, yeah. 30 fun. And uh, yeah, 30 <laughs> fun. He's 30 fun and your brother Chris is 32. Yep. Awesome. Did your toe ever heal? <laughs> it, it did, it did, but now I'm breaking legs now because uh, every night we play, I'm breaking it. <laughs> well, because he's in the wise guys, he's breaking legs, you know? I got you. Breaking bones, too. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes. Keep keeping it real. Yeah. So, as a guitar player, what kind, what kind of guitar do you play? I play uh, Les Paul's electric, electric guitar. Les Paul's, yeah. Um, I got a uh, Marshall. Marshall, uh, Marshall sounding, uh, amp, but, uh, we just got new Marshall cabs and, uh, play EVH, EVH, uh, amps. Uh, we just got a uh, Randall, uh, from Marty Craven. He's yeah. really sick. Uh, Kirk Hammett amp. It's got three channels. It's got a plexi sound and it's got, uh, good tones. It's like a hundred and something Watts. So you got to tone it down a little bit at rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Eddie Van Halen was one of your uh, main uh, influences in, in music, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, I got a Schecter guitar for all the whammy stuff for uh, Eddie Van Halen, you know, for the dive bombs. Yeah, Les Pauls, you know. Um, I got a coil tab so I could split it if I want some uh, single coil sounds. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so when we first approached DJ, we said, hey, man, we said, we want you in the band, you know, but we had so many guitars in the band. I played guitar. JT played guitar. Um, Tommy. So Tommy played guitar. Tommy D. And yeah. Tommy just retired, by the way. He's the guy that wears the white tie. If you see our pictures, and he just retired. But <laughs> he's only 61, but he just retired. But anyhow. So, retired uh, from music, right? Yeah, just from music. But he still hangs out with the band. He still comes out with us. He still helps us load in and load out. And uh, we're actually, we're going to see him tonight. We're going to go out to Sundance Saloon tonight and uh, check out a couple of shows. So he, we, we invited him. We said, hey, man, you want to play bass for us? And he's like, well, I don't know, man. Let me think about it. He goes, you know, I'm not really sure. So uh, he calls up you know, a few days later. He goes, yeah, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. Okay, so cool. So we and him go to, we, we go shopping for a bass guitar, you know, something he likes, you know, and and comfortable with, and we picked out a Thunderbird, and you know, actually nice. wearing the Thunderbird right here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So now, now we're playing, and we're you know, you know and uh, then you know, we as we progressed, you know, we we kept changing instruments. You guys remember that? We kept changing instruments. We're, we're we should be called the musical chairs. I was really. playing. Bass. <laughs> I wound up playing bass on about four songs, right? Because uh, I was playing guitar back then, I wound up playing bass in four songs. You would play bass most of the time, and we just kept switching off. And Tommy would play some bass, you know. And then he'd go back to his guitar. Everybody know. had to play bass so I could play the guitar. <laughs> right? <'cause> we, <laughs> exactly. We wanted him playing guitar. It's a good thing you decided to play bass, though. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here playing guitar, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Basically, yeah. That's a great. That's a great point. That's a great point. But you know, it made me uh, made me really uh, appreciate bass players more because learning, uh, you know, finger style and playing bass parts actually taught me a lot about you know rhythm, syncing up with the the drummer. Which I actually started playing drums first, kind of like Alex and Eddie. They they both play right, drums. Right, right, right. And uh, I started playing guitar just because my brother, I could never keep up with on the drums. We used to jam with our dad and I, I could never uh, beat up my, my brother on the drums. <laughs> I could still beat him up, though. <laughs> no, I, didn't, no, I didn't hear anybody say JT played uh, bass. Uh, no, he actually never did. He never did. No, you never did. M must be a reason. I no, you're, I, next. Uh, you're next. I, uh, I, I think I got my first guitar when I was like 17. Um, you know, in high school. And, and then I went to uh, this place. I think it might have been Sounds Music. It was on Milwaukee Avenue in Wheeling. And I bought a Japanese Strat. And I used to plug that into my stereo and just self-taught, just got to learn the dexterity. You know, how do you time your, your both hands and pl pluck notes and some rudimentary stuff? I probably picked up a lot of bad habits. But that's what all that's all I ever did was sit on the edge of my bed and try to So you never had a lesson? 
I never had lessons. I tried to play guitar, you know, learn how to play a little guitar. Uh, my heroes were Richie Blackmore and Tony Iommi and Ted Nugent. And I liked hard rock, heavy metal. You're still and, and, I, and that was the only guitar I had when I started a jam in Lenny's basement was this Japanese uh, Strat. I forget the name of it. There's no label or anything on it. And then once we decided that we were going to get serious, I mean, Lenny came, he called me up one day and goes, hey, what if we uh, play George's party? And I go, are you crazy? Have you heard us? Because <laughs> we were doing more drinking than anything else, you know, on Friday nights. And, and Lenny's like, no, I, we really, we could do it. And I could tell that he was really wanting to do it. And I was like, well, I didn't want to go out there and embarrass myself, but I said, okay, I'll do it on one condition that we add a second night of rehearsal a week. And it's going to be Tuesday, you know, Tuesday night, no booze, no party. This is business. And he said, okay, he called everybody else up and they said, okay, so that we, we would rehearse twice a week, every week to get ready for this party. And then he said, well, we're going to do the cubby bear. And I go, are you crazy? <laughs> well, after, <laughs> after George's party, we, uh, we learned a few things. And when we did the cubby bear, we actually pulled it off. And now I'm thinking, hey, we could do this. You build up some confidence, right? We built up some confidence. And we, we actually got through all the songs without you know anybody making a major screw up. We didn't have to stop in the middle of a song and say, hey, wait a minute, start over. Yeah. So I'm thinking, hey, we can do this. And so then, uh, then I went out and I bought uh, a real Strat. I went to Guitar Center. I bought a nice Strat. I'm a Strat guy. I love Strats. Yeah. And uh, I just love the sound of them and um, and the playability. And I bought a Marshall. I bought a DSL 40 CR combo amp. And I just love the sound of a straight out of a Marshall. That's always been music to my ears. And um, and then and then we wanted to play uh, Sweet Child of Mine. I go, well, I can't. And DJ was in the band. Now he goes, you can't play that on a Strat. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm, now I'm looking at you know Les Pauls and. I found a great deal on a Les Paul, and uh, I bought that. So I have a Les Paul. I got a bunch of. So now you can play Sweet Child of Mine. I can play Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah. <laughs> when um, Cop in the town. His Les Paul was ten thousand dollars. Mine was two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't go that far. But. Well, now he switches guitar every song. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, for the right, right sound for the right, right song, right? I always wondered why. You know, I'd go to the gigs and see guys <laughs> with racks of guitars. I go, why do they got so many guitars? Yeah. Well, now I got to figure it out. You know, he wanted to play even flow with the drop D. Yeah. Uh, well, you can't yeah. tune, retune your guitar in the middle of a set to play that song. Right. So you need, floating drum, yeah, you need a guitar for that song. Mm -hmm. And a floating drum, oh, yeah. So yeah, now I have three guitar. I got the Strat. I got the Strat for even flow. I got the Les Paul for uh, Sweet Child of Mine, uh, Rolling Stone. Some of this, you know. So for the right song, I use the right thing. Uh, but I've learned a lot. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. playing now for four years with these, and then Chris is a phenomenal drummer. But in my own opinion, I've never heard a drummer in a cover band that can play drums the way Chris Arrigo can. He's got a certain beat and a rhythm to him that, and he hits him hard, really hard. I mean, he's a good, good drummer. He's a banger. I've never heard anybody any that, that were that was better than him. He's, he's solid, solid. He's really solid. And DJ is top one of the top guitar players in the state, if not the United States. This guy is unbelievable. His leads and solos and what he can play, and Jim Petty is a professional bass player. So, I mean, Lenny and I, now we're sitting there playing with these guys and it's like, you know, it raises our game too. I have to keep up with these guys and I've learned a lot about it. You know, song structure and all that. And something I was, you know, we, I'm, I grew up in the 70s, late 60s, 70s. So, I mean, for us, music was everything. We didn't have video games. You right. really were outside right. playing baseball. Right. Or you were listening to music. I drive down the street and I never see kids outside. Never no. see kids outside. No. Too much screen time. Yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. I always say the drummer drives the band. The drummer's driving the bus. You know, he's, he's, he's in control. He's, and you follow him. And if you got a good drummer, that's important. Yeah, that yeah. rhythm section is really, really important. You know, I learned that uh, between Jim and Chris, I mean, they really drive the band. These guys are great, you know, with the, with their solos and uh, guitar, but that rhythm section really helps the vocals right. too, you know. Right. 
Yeah, so I'm definitely uh, learning from these guys. Well, the better the drummer, the more fun I have. <laughs> <laughs> So now, Jim, uh, I see you're wearing a Fender shirt. I'm, I'm guessing you as a, as a precision guy, right? Well, I've been playing a jazz, Fender jazz. for a while. Okay. And uh, it's funny you say that because I just bought a five-string. Uh, it's a Char precision. Charvel. It's a Charvel with a precision pickup and a jazz bass pickup. You get paid by the string? Pretty yeah. much. It's yeah. <laughs> paid by the G string. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've been playing uh, five strings for for 30 years now. I have you? I, I really like the uh, extended range. But I miss the P bass sound. Right. And I was playing, I have a, I have a Mike Lull uh, jazz bass, five string, uh, that sounds awesome. I can use it for just about anything except getting a P bass sound. And I kind of wanted to go back to that. So last Tuesday, I, I found this bass five string with the uh, P bass pickups. And it's ex exactly what I was looking for. So there you go. Very cool. I played it last night for the first time at practice and uh, I felt right at home again. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. nice when it all falls in place like that, huh? Yeah, our, our Fridays, he said last night, our Fridays, um, we have rehearsal every Friday, unless we have a show on Saturday, then uh, we'll either skip it or we'll maybe we'll do Tuesday. So every every week we either have a rehearsal or a show, okay? Um, but sometimes our rehearsals turn into shows because people come by, we have a really nice setup and, you know, sound system, we got lighting, we got a bar, we got pool table, we got everything. Card table. You say you play cards afterwards? Or <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. We actually uh, don't play cards that much anymore because everybody wants to jam all the time. But, yeah. but uh, people come by to see us. So sometimes we'll go, you know, we'll, we'll, so we, we try to rehearse for a set, you know, for our set list, for our set. And, uh, but then <laughs> people come by and then we put on a little bit of a show. Uh, you know, let's not let's not play that song let's not learn learn the arrangement of the song tonight let's let's just play you know our, our stuff set. we know right? let's put on a show tonight let's put on a show so that's what we do so we have fun on fridays you know um unless we're playing a show then we're then we have fun at the show but yeah we're having a lot of fun doing it right now so what, what do you get way of shows coming up we're playing at edison park that's a bigger venue edison park i don't know if you guys know edison park uh right. outskirts of chicago uh, April 9th, we're upstairs in a big up, room. Up near Park, uh, Park, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Park Ridge. Park Ridge. Park Ridge. Park Ridge. Right, Park Ridge. right Park next to Park, Park Ridge. Ridge. Actually, it's right down the street from, um, uh, Firewater. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, which is another good place. But the Edison Park Inn, they call it EPIs. It's upstairs. It's a great place. And then we got a couple of shows. Uh, we got the Farm of Palooza we usually do. Uh, North West Side, uh, Reunion. Uh, I don't know. You guys know about that, but that's, uh, that's in July, but we're, you know, it's hard to book some shows because, you know, it's like, there's so many, there's, there's this many bands and there's, you know, th there's this many, uh, venues, you know what I mean? So, uh, well, right now, a lot of people are saying it's hard because they're trying to make up on the lost shows from the last couple of years. Exactly. They're honoring contracts from exactly. last year. So exactly. And, uh, you know, they're also in a rotation too, like, you know, they're, these bands have their foot in the doors with these other, with these venues. You know, it's kind of a rotation. You know, they, they rotate these bands through. So it's hard to get into some of these places, but we're actually playing some bigger venues and some different venues and we're branching out. So we're getting a lot of play. We got uh, over 5,000 uh, followers on Facebook, um, which our Facebook page is uh, The Wise Guys Chicago. The Wise Guys. So there's a few bands called The Wise Guys, but if you if you type in The Wise Guys Chicago, we'll pop up. Okay. Uh, we're also on Instagram, uh, Wise Guys the Band, you know, and we have a website, uh, WiseGuysTheBand.com. But yeah, that's where um, that's where we're at. So tell about the Elmhurst show. Uh, yeah, we just played a, a, the Freedom Fest in Elmhurst. What a what a what a show! Uh, great venue, great. Uh, Stage, sound, lighting, put on Brian Brian Mitchell for Freedom One Entertainment. Uh, just just a great venue. We had a lot of fun there, and um, you know there, there there should have been more people there, but you know it's, it's people are just starting to come out of their 
basements now, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because of, you know, COVID's kind of ending now. And, uh, I think, it, I think we're going to start having more fun now. People are getting more comfortable getting out there, you know, and a little bit looser, right? a little bit looser. Right. So, so uh, ho- hopefully, yeah. How'd you guys survive COVID just rehearsing? Uh, yeah, we did in the beginning, you know what we did in the beginning? We, we, we tried to hook up all this stuff and we can do it from each other's house, like virtual stuff. Yeah. It's and not there, easy. And the, it's not easy because there was like a lag and right, this right. and that, but we kind of did. We had some fun, you know, right? <laughs> we had some fun with each other in, in the different houses. Um, but we actually, during the, the, the lockdown, we played six shows that year. And a lot of bands didn't play anything. Yeah, right. And so we played six shows that year. Uh, the next year, we played a, a whole ton of shows, you know. And, you know, <laughs> last year, we played a lot of shows also. But, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, you know, COVID kind of, you know, locked everybody down, but it was kind of good for me because I actually got to work on my vocals a lot with Franco, um, my vocal coach, Franco, and then with Rachel, Rachel Williams. Um, so I kind of like brought my game up a little bit. You know, uh, I put a lot of time in, a lot of lessons, a lot of breathing exercises, you know, vocal exercises and things like that, you know. And actually, I learned how to take vocal naps you guys know what a vocal nap is? Uh, mm-hmm. oh, no. A vocal nap is, is you know, when you have a show coming up and you're, and you're, and you know, you're getting kind of tired. You just kind of take, I'm not going to talk for an hour. Okay. I'm going to take a vocal oh, nap, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, things like that. But yeah. So yeah. Um, that's basically how it went through, through COVID. Yeah. So you guys went from playing, uh, uh, starting out four years ago, we were playing four or five, so five songs is opening up for, for uh, smells like Dave Grohl. So doing three hours now, so yeah, yeah. We, so, so what what kind of material are you doing? Uh, we do anything from uh, uh, you know Guns and Roses, Pearl Jam. We'll do Gin Blossoms. We'll, um, you know, what am I forgetting? We do Neil, Neil uh, Jimi Hendrix, Neil Young, Van Halen, Van Halen for sure, man. Oh, we love Van Halen. You know. was one of my thing my Van Halen was one of my uh, favorite bands Aerosmith was one of my favorite bands okay. going up but we're uh, Grand Funk Railroads <laughs> yeah yep Grand Funk nice. what else do we do we got and, and this was kind of hard for me be, you know uh, taking over as, as um, you know on vocals because I had to learn all these songs so what kind of helped me in, during COVID is I got to study my butt off and learn all the lyrics to all these songs I had to learn 35 songs like, like that. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I probably know 50 right now that, that we do, but, um, you know, I had to play them over and over. I had to write, write them down, right. you know, but yeah, it was, uh, you, you didn't use a monitor for, for you. No, no I've that. never used a monitor. I, I've seen a couple of guys do that and I'm like, what are you looking at? And then I figured out, oh yeah, they're looking at the, the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just cheating as far as I can see. Yeah. Cause a good, a good vocalist will be able to, to, uh, uh, Ed lib some words in there exactly. and you never, never realize it. Yeah. Am I, am I wrong, Franco? <laughs> yeah, right. We also built some chemistry too. Like uh, I could screw up a, a, a verse or a song. We don't stop and turn around and look at each other. We just keep going. You guys will never know if we screwed something up. Right. <laughs> right. We, we built up some good chemistry uh, over the years. Yeah. So. Well, that's important. That's yeah. important. I mean, playing together, the more you play together, obviously the tighter you get again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had our, uh, our first, uh, our first or second vocalist, uh, lead singer, he would stop and turn around and look and say, what are you doing? Like during the show, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, you know, and he, you know, we had to, we had to like put a stop to that. Yeah. So. Yeah, you don't um, want to bring any more attention to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've built up some good chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Just follow the drummer and the bus. <laughs> That's right. There right. you go. So as I said, he's driving the bus, right? Yeah. yeah and Jim sees the wheels. He keeps That's rolling. It. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started out as a drummer myself, my musical background. Uh, when I was a youngster, 
I always wanted to play drums and I played in the school band. I played drums in a school band. But uh, then I, I, gravi- I gravitated towards guitar when I, when I got older. I always wanted to play like acoustic guitar and a campfire. You know what I mean? That was like, that'd be awesome for me to do. But uh, I, didn't get gut- I didn't buy a guitar until like 20 years ago. You know, uh, then I bought a couple of strats, you know, for my kids to play. And, uh, you know, they, they were so involved in sports and stuff that uh, they didn't have much time to play, you know. So I, I, I played more guitar than they did. But, uh, yeah, my... my you wanted rest- to go to waste, right? So you- no. <laughs> Heck no. Now, now <laughs> you don't know how many guitars I have now. <laughs> I just built it, my own guitar, actually. But, yeah. I, wow. yeah. I, I, I built a, a, a badass uh, Les Paul. We call it the Lenny Paul. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. It's awesome. It's chromed out. Yeah. Yeah. GJ loves to play it. My guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a kit you, you put together? Yeah, I, I bought the kit from Solo Guitars uh, out of Canada. Uh, it comes in a box, you know, and, and it comes with the, you know, with the guitar neck and, uh, you know, the, the, the guitar body. The guitar body, you can buy it finished or unfinished. Uh, you know, I, I bought it finished because, you know, it's just too hard to, to finish it, <laughs> you know, get that right finish. But I wired it and everything, and then I put the whole thing together. And it, I played it and it sounded great, right? And um, then I said, you know what? I'm gonna, I want to put some uh, Seymour Duncan Les or uh, Seth Lovers in it. So I put, I upgraded my uh, pickups because yeah, Seymour Duncan Seth Lovers, and the thing sounds great. And I and I bought the Gibson um, Les Paul toggle switch with the wiring, and uh, the thing sounds great, man. It really does. No problems with the neck. No, you know, you know what? I, I took it and I got it. I got a little setup on it. And the guy said, man. I barely need a setup. This sounds great. Yeah. And, uh, got some, uh, nice, uh, NYXL 1052 strings on there. Yeah. The frets are great on that. I, I wasn't expecting the frets to be that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things got a great uh, look to it too. So I've thought about doing it. I know some guys who've done that and, and, but I'm always worried about the neck, you know, yeah. neck not being the right feel or something for you. Yeah. yeah no, th- this one actually feels like a, like a, a old old Gibson baseball bat. It's like sixties oh, yeah. neck. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's a more of a vintage style, actually, guitar. You know, if you think about it. But yeah, it's got the bolt on neck. You know, and right. I think sounds great, man, with the pickups. It's got some hot pickups. I, I love it. Yeah, I I, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to build my own now. <laughs> you want that one? <laughs> I want that one, <laughs> but I can't have it. Yeah. Well, it's ours, right? It's the wise guys. It's ours. Yeah, we're, yeah, we, we, um, we actually have like, you know, we're, we're the wise guys, right? But if, if anybody were to leave the band, it's okay. Somebody would come in because we have, the wise guys have all the equipment. We, we have, we actually have two sets of equipment. We have one for our rehearsal studio and that stays there. It stays there. Then we have a travel, okay, we have a trailer full of the same exact gear equipment, uh, amps, everything identical to, you know, for our shows, for our, cool. That's for our live shows. Yeah. It's way better than running up and down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. We don't, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we don't carry stuff in and out of the rehearsal studio. Except for your guitar, right? Exa- exactly. Except for the yeah. guitar. And, and, and Jim's four bases. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm spoiled now because I used to have to haul every piece of equipment and PA gear. Uh, so you had a PA too? Oh man, we yeah, we got everything. We got subwoofers. We got we got everything. We got a, we got three PAs. <laughs> we have different size PAs. <laughs> we do for whatever venue you want. But yeah, we got. Li- you should see our uh, our setup, our lighting system. Um, we got a nice lighting system because I I really feel that you know you got to put on a show. Okay, you know I I, I know well, you're, you're there to entertain. You're there to entertain. <laughs> the music is a lot of it. But again, you have to put on the show. You have to look good, you know. And I tell these guys, hey, guys, you guys got to look good on stage. You know, you got to, you know, watch your carbs. You know, you got, <laughs> yeah, you do. You gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta work out a little bit. I like to work out myself, but you know, I, I, I tell the guys, you guys got to look good for the stage because we're we're putting on the show. I lost thirty pounds already. Why are you pointing at DJ? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, DJ's doing good. He, DJ's doing good. Yeah. Congratulations, DJ, and 30 pounds. <laughs> yeah, good job. 
Yeah, and then you got Franco. Franco, look at Franco. He's fucking badass. Look at him. <laughs> he's, okay. he's our he's our design our our designer too. He makes he his is. trust good. <laughs> well, well, Franco, he's got the theatrics about him, you know. And he he comes over and he says, "None of you guys got to do this. You got to do that. You got to show more of this, show more of that." And Franco is like more theatrical because he's in opera, you know. So um, Franco helps us a lot with that part of it. Yeah. So, Franca, how long have you been doing opera? Uh, I've been doing opera for about 40 years myself. Oh, wow. uh, I, I, I started in rock and roll. My, uh, in fact, I played with Jim when I was uh, 17, I think. We played a, a gig together. and uh, I, was, I was 14. He was 14. And, uh, yeah, I wanted, to be a, I, wanted to, I wanted to be a rock star, and I wanted to be Robert Plant, and, you know, and uh, didn't know anything about physiology or, you know, vocal quality. And, you know, I'm singing in falsetto most of the time. And uh, so I went in, I uh, back, you know, remember phone books? Sure. I just opened it up and found voice teachers back then. And I just found a, a guy, his name is Carl Lorenz. He, he's a wonderful voice teacher up in... Um, Hoffman Estates, and he used to sing with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra under Schulte. And he said, you know, I hear something. If I taught you a few classical things, would you do? And I kind of fell into it. And uh, then I really loved it, but I never stopped loving rock and roll. And, you know, so I know we're of a very similar generation. So, you know, I, I saw Zeppelin and when they were here in right. the old stadium and, all the great Chicago bands off Broadway, million time, your band several times, uh, cheap trick thousands of times. Uh, and you know, I, I always have that. And so when Lenny came by and, and asked for, and what the drummer before Chris was also a, a friend of mine who was playing with the wise guys. And he goes, you know, Lenny, Lenny might want to switch over to vocalist. Would you teach him? And I said, yeah, sure. If, if he'll, if he'll follow my technique, you know, because I, you know, I have a very, I'm very technical driven. So I, I didn't want, but Lenny is really a hard worker. And I have to say from where he was two years ago to now is, it's like climbing Everest. He, he really took it seriously. And uh, we, we rehearse, we have a lesson every week. He's got another voice teacher that he, he studies with. So he's getting, uh, you know, good different points of view, but from um, an opera side, it was like you guys got to you got to put on a show. I mean, it's a right. rock show. Right. You can't just be guys in t-shirts and uh, you know your have your shoes nailed to the floor. Huh? <laughs> you can't have your shoes nailed to the floor. No, you know. And, 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 well, we can You know, I remember Plant and 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 Deep Purple, and you know, and these guys they they embody the, the emotional side of, of these songs. And, and I, you know, and Lenny, he, he's in the, he's in the concrete business. I said, Lenny, you, you have a great business, but you can't be Lenny, the concrete guy and Lenny, the rock star. They, you have to find that, that part of you that, uh, that makes you want to get up on stage and open your soul and, uh, and, 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 get emotional with these and then he put this band together and you know dj jim and and jt i'm and chris too i mean they 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 effing bring it you know and and lenny lenny has started to see a different side of his personality and i said make sure you take care of your wife because once you're up on stage and those girls start getting up there you don't get in trouble. You know? <laughs> Make sure you take her on a nice oh, that's, vacation. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I, yeah I, and I do. Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why am I not surprised that somebody in uh, the wise guys is in the concrete business? <laughs> well, you know, we kind of, we kind of make cement shoes. Yeah, you know? As you say, make any shoes. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I did that. All sizes. Yeah. I, did. I had a, I had a guy come into shop one day in the, in the office, you know, and he says, and he owed some money, right? So I, I grab a tape measure off the counter because we sold tape measures and all that, you know. And I, and I, and I bend down, bend over, and I, and I'm measuring his, his shoes, right, his feet. And he says, "What are you doing?" I says, "I'm measuring your feet." I said, "Because if you don't pay your damn bill, I'm going to make you some concrete shoes." You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually a true story, but yeah. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, no, so so music business is, is way better than the concrete business. I'll tell you that. We're having fun. Yeah. So we can find you on Facebook and, and at Wise Guys, um, the, the band, and the website. Yeah, Wise Guys, the band on um, on Instagram and uh, wiseguystheband.com, you know, and then, you know, yeah. Wise Guys, the Wise Guys Chicago, because there's a few other bands, you know, right. named the Wise Guys. There's one in New Orleans. There's one in, uh, I think, Indiana. Uh, there might be another one. And then there's us, you know, but uh, we're... we're we're better than them. <laughs> of course, you're from Chicago. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Are you all Italian? Well, pretty much. I think uh, I think I, I have a little Italian in me. Um, I think Italian Irish, Italian Irish, Italian Irish. Uh, I'm half Italian and half German. Oh, German. Okay, I have a little German in me too. Actually, uh, if you go if you go back a little further, uh, but yeah, but. Um, the reason the wise guys came, like I said, so you're the real wise guys. We're the real wise guys, yeah. But <laughs> forget but it, about it. It's because we were older, you know what I mean. So yeah. Yeah. we're uh, we're going to be playing a lot of shows, and we're trying to actually, you know, break into some of these uh, difficult venues to break into. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So look for us. We just did uh, a nice show. You can see our, our, we have a nice video that we played at uh, at our last show. It's on our website. You know, it's, it's on our Facebook page too, so. And we'll be sure and check that out. Yep, definitely. Thanks guys for joining us today. Hey, thanks yeah, for thanks having for us. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I know you, I know you made a long trip uh, from Northbrook, right? Down <laughs> here so at Joliet. Oh, don't worry. It only took us like, this guy, this guy, I'm not kidding you. He, um, he, he had the Range Rover up to 110 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like we were going 30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think your ride's nice. Yeah. All righty, guys. We'll yeah. see you out and about somewhere, yeah. hopefully this summer. Yeah. Sounds good, sure man. Check out the Wise Guys. Yes, for sure. Rock and roll. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. So that was the Wise Guys. Wind up. Probably could help you with your situation. They just might. I can't believe he's got his own concrete business. Yeah, well, Lenny's got his own concrete business, and uh, he, he can maybe help you out with those shoes you're trying to fit. That's right. You know, I, I'm into import and export myself. I see. A lot of people don't know that about me. What are you important? Uh, you wouldn't want to know. Never mind. Never mind. Forget about Forget it. Forget about it. It's 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 be beneath you. I see. Speaking of beneath, no, no, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> so that was a good that was good talking to them guys. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Very entertaining and uh, my kinds of people. That's right. That's right. Very very cool. Very cool band. They got uh, great sound. Nice. Uh, they do some good material. Got some good good uh, musicians in there. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And it sounds like they'll be fun to go see. Most so go, go check them out, people. Uh, at your as soon as you can, go to, go to their their website, wiseguysband dot com dot com right, or wise guys on uh, Facebook. Wise guys band, I believe, on Facebook. Or is it no, Wise Guys Chicago? Wise, Wise Guys, guys Chicago, Chicago on Facebook. WiseGuysBand.com. Wise Guys Band on Instagram. That's right. That kind of that kind of rhymed there. <laughs> That's right. I'm kind of like a poet, you know. My feet are long fellows too. I bet they are. So once again, coming to you live or recorded from the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66 in beautiful downtown Joliet. Visit them at roadtorock.org and sign up today to be a charter member. Okay, I will. I'll do that. You better have. You should have done it a long time ago. I've already done it. I've already done it a long time ago. Okay. But we, we were just talking to Andy from, from the... Uh, from the Rock and Roll Museum. That's right. He's one of the board of directors. He's here today doing some work. And he's uh, he's very knowledgeable about the history of, uh, of music. Very. And he, he was working on a wall. And I went up and asked him, I said, you, you, you was putting somebody inside that wall that, uh, that you're covering up there? He said, no. No. He said, don't be a wise guy. That's right. He said, no wise guys here. So wise guys have left the building. They sure have. So uh, 
Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you soon. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music that's played on this podcast. The music is used to promote the band or musicians that are interviewed. Oh, Chicago.